On May 23rd, 1978, I was standing in the driveway of our home in New Britain, Connecticut, right next to my old beat-up Chevy Nova. And right next to that Chevy Nova, I was shaking in my boots. Because in that moment, I was realizing that I was leaving home for the very first time at the tender age of 23. Can you all remember when you first left home? I mean, if you have left home. <laughs> I'm wondering, were you as excited and terrified as I was? Because in that moment, a flash of thought hit me. This was the picture. It looked exactly like this. And that tear in the left eye was caused by a momentary flash. Oh, no. What, what if I don't succeed in graduate school? I don't want to disappoint mom and dad. And that's what... Mom came running down the driveway. One last hug, honey. One last hug. Gives me this big hug and whispered in my ear. Honey, remember, if you don't like it there, your room will always be here. Oh, what a relief that was. In that moment, I had no idea that mom was not only helping me embrace change, she was introducing me to a topic that was going to dominate my leadership research and teaching for decades, and that topic is paradox. So what is a leadership paradox? What does it have to do with mom's story? And most importantly, what does it have to do with you? Well, a paradox is, first of all, it is not two physicians. Thank you. <laughs> they do get worse. <laughs> no, a paradox is when you have two opposing goals that pull you in opposite directions at the same time. They are like rubber band issues, because if I took a rubber band and I had one goal in each hand and they tended to pull me in opposite directions, I would need to accomplish both goals and pursue both goals because if I let go of one goal at the other, two things would happen. First would be a snap, and then you would hear a, ouch. And that's exactly what would have happened in the driveway if mom had not intervened. You see, in that driveway, I was feeling overwhelmed by change. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by change? Yes or yes? Of course, of course, we all feel overwhelmed by change at times. And what, re what mom knew intuitively is what researchers have now shown conclusively, and that is this. If you really want people to embrace change, you need to give them a little stability. That's what her hug and whisper did for me. So let's get practical right away. Next time you're feeling overwhelmed by change, you're bobbing around in that sea of uncertainty because your mooring has been ripped asunder, I invite you to brainstorm the answers to this paradoxical question, the first of three paradoxical questions I will share with you today. What will give me the stability needed to embrace this change? When you brainstorm the answers to that question, you'll be able to manage stability and change together. You will, in fact, be stretching when you're pulled by those opposing demands. So that's a quick example in our personal life. What about our professional lives? Is there paradox at work in your work? Well, for the last two decades, I've been researching and interviewing leaders at all levels of the organizations. Leaders like many of you, even if you don't have direct reports, you do lead in some areas of your life, right? So this pertains to you, and I've come up with several key findings I'd like to share with you. The first is, when I looked at all their goals, when I asked them, what are your goals, what are your challenges, what are your demands? I came up with a top ten list. Here it is. And as you quickly scan the list, look for the second key finding, the pattern among those top 10. Because when I ask leaders, how are you going to approach those? They say, well, we tackle one at a time like we always have around here. And I said, great, but that doesn't work anymore because I analyzed this second finding I'll share with you. You all see the pattern? Good, because it took me years to find it on my own. And if you spotted it in seconds... That would show how much brighter you are. Here we go. Look at this. Let 
Do you see what's happening here? In today's global, complex, interdependent world, we can no longer pursue some of our goals one at a time because many of these goals are not just goals, they're professional stretch goals. And leaders are required, by definition, if we have a paradox here, to pursue two goals at the same time. They need to stretch when they're pulled because if they don't, two things are going to happen. One is snap followed by what? Uh, ow. <laughs> yeah, ouch. I'm glad this is a short talk. So, that's the second key finding. First is we got a top 10 list. Second is there are paradoxical goals. Here's the third related to the second. There is an avalanche of evidence now demonstrating that the very best organizations are pursuing and achieving opposing goals at the same time. For example, two researchers, Dodd and Farrell, investigated 1,000 organizations over a 20-year period of time. They found that the best performing, the most profitable organizations and the most successful leaders in those organizations were in fact pursuing opposing goals at the same time and achieving them. That's why they were most profitable. Why? Because in today's complex, interdependent global environment, with increasing number of stakeholders, Achieving opposing goals satisfies the increasing number of diverse stakeholders. Now, I'll warn you when I'm being profound. You have these opposing stakeholders who have different agendas, these interest groups, and when you achieve both goals at the same time, you're satisfying multiple stakeholders. So, how can we make this come alive for you? Well, let's look at one of these, the second one. How do we accomplish long-term goals and at the same time meet our short-term desires? Otherwise known as the long-term, short-term paradox. How do you actually manage that? Well, imagine, if you will, that you have a long-term goal. You've all had long-term goals, consciously or subconsciously, right? Of course. So imagine you have a long-term goal. I'll even give you one. Pretend you're taking some classes and you want to do really well in those classes. Uh, maybe even graduate with honors if you're in a school system. Or, one that may apply to many of us, is anybody ever try to lose a little weight here? <laughs> yes, so you step on the scale and it talks back to you. And you decide, I need to lose a little weight. OMG. Well, what happens? What's the dynamic that usually happens? Here's what usually happens to most of us. Here we are studying, trying to do well in school, and all of a sudden, we get a text from our friends that say, come on, hang out with us, let's uh, play some video games. And what happens to that long-term goal? <laughs> Disappears. Short-term wins the tug of war. Or on the diet. This ever happened to you? You're on a diet doing pretty well. You get invited to friends for dinner. And after dinner comes what? Calories called dessert. And what happens? Short-term wins again. So how can you restore some balance to this equation? Let me share with you the second paradoxical question to help you next time you're struggling and stretching between the long-term and short-term paradox. I invite you to brainstorm the answers to this question. What do I owe my future self now? How surprised will you be when you project yourself into the future by asking this question? You're actually giving your long-term a little bit more pull, more weight. And you're able to stretch when you're pulled. So the dynamic changes. The dynamic changes to what? To this. There you are studying. You get that text. And this time you tell your friends, yep, I'll join you in about an hour or two. Or you're doing well on your diet, invited to your friends for dinner. Out comes dessert. And you say, yes, I'll have one scoop because you've given long-term a little bit more pull. What you're really doing is stretching when you're pulled by opposing demands. Now, I wish I had learned this much earlier in my life because I may have been able to avert a disaster back home in New Britain. Let me explain. If you were to Google hardware capital of the world, for, for whatever reason, you would find 
New Britain, Connecticut, my hometown, population 70,000, right near the top of that hit list. When I was growing up, everybody worked in the factories. Here's one of them right here, New Britain Machine, right down the street from us. My dad worked in these factories all through high school and college. I worked in these factories, undergrad school. Over time, what happened? Well, as often happens, people clamored for more, which is the natural inclination. But here's what really happened. Our leaders gave them more, focusing on long-term or short-term. Short-term. Short-term carried more weight. It showed up like this. Politicians focused on the next election, not the next generation. So they kicked the can down the road with respect to unfunded liabilities. Union leaders focus on wages and benefits today. Corporate leaders focusing on short-term profits at the expense of long-term goals. Everybody was focusing on the short-term and this is one of the major causes for all those factories closing. Well, we know what happened. The factories did close or moved out of town. People lost their jobs, lost their livelihoods. My dad lost his job when his factory closed. Lost his life savings. And then he took his own life. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we the people elect leaders who don't stretch when they're pulled by opposing demands. Everybody's dreams get trashed. Snap. Ouch. How can we turn pain of the past into a compelling future? I think the answer is to ask three paradoxical questions on a regular basis. The first two, you know already. So I invite you, next time you're being pulled by the stability change paradox, brainstorm the answers to what will give me the stability needed to embrace this change. When you're pulled by the long-term, short-term paradox, don't let short-term have its way with you. Manage the tension between both by answering this question. What do I owe my future self now? And the third one, if you want to continually develop your both-end thinking in today's either-or world, brainstorm on a regular basis the answers to this question. How well am I stretching when I'm pulled by opposing demands? Ask that throughout the day. How well am I stretching today? I was sharing these with a chief financial officer whom I was coaching not too long ago. And she said, Dave, these questions are great. I need to remind myself to ask these questions. I said, how are you going to do that? She looked at her wrist and said, oh, I know. I'll get a, a bracelet that stretches. I said, good idea. So recently I stopped by her her office. She reached under her blouse and said, you want to see my bracelet that stretches? I said, yeah, let me see it. Here it is. Perhaps there's a bracelet somewhat like this. <laughs> Not exactly like this, okay? I don't want the expectations to grow up. In your very near future. Let me close by inviting you to share these ideas with as many people as you know. And I urge you to actually take action on these ideas, too. And of course, if you choose to take action, that will require you to change behaviors a little bit. And for many of us, that's a bit of a stretch. So I'd like to offer you a little stability by telling you I'll be here all day today and this evening. So if you have any questions and I can help you stretch, I'm happy to answer them, give you a little stability. And of course, I'll also give you what mom gave me, if you'd like, and that is a hug. Thank you all so very much.